I did it, boys and girls. After 40 years of not stepping into a kingdom hall, I went back for the memorial. Let me tell you all about it. <laughs> so, yeah, as you may know, it's been uh, two and a half years since I left the religion. And it's been four years since I've been in a kingdom hall because of COVID. The, although I stayed, I was still a believer uh, a few months after COVID. Uh, but yeah, it's been two years since I left the religion. And I haven't gone to the Kingdom Hall ever since. I missed the last memorial. Uh, but I decided to go this time because I wanted to see, you know, what had changed. Uh, I knew about the beard update and the, the pant update. But I wanted to see for myself, you know, man, how will it feel to be back in the, to the Kingdom Hall after being gone for three years and after waking up from my indoctrination? And let me just tell you that it was super lame <laughs> uh, it was surreal really to to go back to the grind of listening to talks and it was just so boring so yeah in this episode I'm gonna tell you about it uh, so it's, it's gonna be a podcast kind of thing uh, so I'm not gonna put any videos up so you can listen to this while uh, you do whatever you do maybe you're running or running around or I don't know Whatever you're doing, you can listen to it. And maybe if you shared the same experience as me, if you went to the memorial this year, please let me know in the comments below your thoughts and your experiences going back to a Kingdom Hall after waking up. And I mean, I didn't go back to the Kingdom Hall because the memorial was in like a high school stadium and it was three congregations. Um, yeah, first of all, um, no one really paid attention to me. <laughs> uh, I expected at least, you know, some elders to come up to me to say hello. But um, I think they just kind of accepted the fact that um, I no longer believe because maybe I told you about this, but uh, two elders came to visit me like a couple months ago and I explained to them why I no longer believe. And they didn't even try to win me back or they didn't even open up their Bibles uh, no, they just listened to my arguments and they shake my hand, they give me a hug, a hug and they left. That's why so many people are leaving. That's why they're losing so many young people because these elders are not even trying to answer people's doubts about the religion. It's just you gotta stick your head in the sand and stop asking questions. And yeah, this religion is not sustainable. <laughs> so yeah, the elders didn't really try to um talk to me at all which was kind of strange actually um but it's fine i mean i'm not going back to the kingdom hall so it's it's okay uh, i did see an old friend in in the memorial uh and it's super strange because this was one of my best friends growing up we went to school together to high school and um yeah i mean we feel nothing for each other anymore which is it's quite tragic actually uh if you think about it but I'm glad he's doing okay. He has a beard now. Uh, that's a that's another thing. These brothers took huge advantage of the beard update. And like, damn. Like, almost half of the brothers there were having beards. The guy who gave the talk, uh, the memorial talk, had a beard. And this was the most surreal thing ever. Like, this would be unthinkable in the last memorial. A dude with a beard giving the talk. And yeah, it happened. And... Yeah, most of these guys had beards and honestly it does favor it, it is a favor to a lot of them because a lot of these guys are super big so having a beard kind of helps them not have a baby face like mark sanderson um so yeah it, it was quite fascinating to see that and i'm genuinely happy for these people because them have more self-expression and that's a good thing you know but it's still pretty disturbing how these grown men had to wait for so long to grow a beard it makes you wonder like did all these men want a beard secretly all this time or are they just following the bandwagon of having beards because that's the new thing to have who knows <laughs> i don't have an answer for that um the ladies they were all wearing skirts i mean pants are a bit too informal for a memorial so i understand um i wore just a shirt a button-up shirt and some slacks and some dress shoes but I, dare, I didn't wear a tie or a suit jacket. I should have worn a suit jacket because it was hella cold. And uh, I think I'm getting a bit sick because I was just wearing my shirt. But uh, I did feel quite informal, uh, which is fine. I mean, it was just an hour of, of a boring talk. It, it's just 
mind blowing how boring these talks actually are. I kind of forgot about it um, because I, maybe you see the JW broadcast that I put on and the, my rebuttals, and they're mo they're pretty boring the way people speak. But man, this speaker, he was just following the guidelines. Like it's it's a real shame because if you think about the subject matter. It's, uh, you know, the sacrifice of Jesus. Where the, the memorial talk is just talking about Jesus and why his sacrifice saves us from death and eternal life, all that. And if you think about it, I mean, the gospel is supposed to be the most emotional subject in Christianity, right? Uh, and good preachers know this. And when they talk about the gospel, they will, you know, put emotion like, oh, Jesus died for us. He died for my sins. He uh, suffered. He all the things he went through, the nails, the cross. You need to put an emphasis on the suffering of Christ to have an emotional um, effect on your audience. That's the point of the memorial talk to invite people to uh, recognize this. You know, this dude didn't put any emotion in the talk. He was just following the script. He read the Bible text without any emotion on them. He It was just kind of like a, a bucket list. Read this text, explain it. Read the next text, explain it. And if you've never been to a memorial talk, they're always the same. So let me tell you how they go. Um, you sit down and you, you sing the first song. So the speaker thanks everyone that made it to the talk. He's like, oh, thank you guys for making the sacrifice to be here. Then he spends like 10 minutes talking about why uh, sin entered the world. So he talks about Adam and Eve. And then he explains um, about the ransom. That's what they call Jesus' sacrifice. Uh, why Jesus had to come down to earth. Uh, so that's like 10, 15 minutes of the talk devoted to Jesus. <laughs> and then the ent the rest of the talk is devoted to protocol. It's uh, The speaker explains um, why... Uh, most of the people are not allowed to drink from the wine and eat from the bread um, because in the Jehovah's Witness religion, only a few anointed people um, get to eat from the emblems, you know, eat the bread, drink the wine. Only if you have the hope of going to heaven can, are you allowed to do this. But the vast majority of witnesses are expect to live in paradise earth, so they don't partake from the emblems. Um, they just pass them around. Um, and they don't eat from them, you know, which is very different from other sects of Christianity. Um, so it's quite bizarre because you only speak about Jesus for like 10, 15 minutes and you do it without any emotion at all. And then the rest of the talk is devoted to um, explaining the bread and the wine and explaining why you shouldn't eat from it. <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. How they think that the, this talk could draw people in. Because if you're an outsider, you go to this talk, you're like, okay, well, why should I care? You know, why, why should I become a Jehovah's Witness? And the entire talk is dedicated to why you shouldn't participate in this ritual. Why you should just look at it and pass the emblems around. So they explain that. Uh, they explain what it means to be an anointed person, which is the anointed are the ones that are going to go to heaven. And they explain that an anointed person just knows that they're anointed. They, they just have this feeling that God gave them. And that doesn't explain anything that that, that doesn't. It's just like, oh, they just know. <laughs> they just know. And Jehovah tells them. But... If Jehovah hasn't told you, if you're not 100% sure you're anointed, you shouldn't be eating the bread or drinking the wine. Um, so, yeah, it, it's silly. It's super silly it, from from an outsider perspective and even from a Christian perspective because it just goes against the words of Jesus. You know, you have to partake in this ritual that I'm instituting uh, because it's eternal life. I'm not a Christian anymore, but... If I was a Christian, this almost seems sacrilegious <laughs> to deny people the opportunity to eat the bread and drink the wine. So they just pass it around. Um, it's like it takes like five, seven minutes to to pass it to all, everyone in the auditorium, and then the 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 servers, well, the the brothers who pass them around <laughs> at the end, they have to go to the front row, and then they pass it among each other. So they have to sit down and then. They have to hold the bread. It's super weird. <laughs> and then at the end, they give it to the 
uh, one doing the talk and he uh, also holds it and yeah so usually in most memorials you're not gonna see anyone eating from the bread or drinking from the wine because there's only like 20,000 anointed Jehovah's Witnesses and there's like 8 million JWs in total so it's just a very small fraction of the population of the JW population that takes the emblems and the final minutes of the talk are dedicated to um, explaining what you can do if you feel grateful you know what are the next steps to uh, appreciating Jesus sacrifice basically studying with Jehovah's Witnesses and that would lead you to convert get baptized and you know get into the hamster wheel of JW life yourself this guys this this is the one most important day for a Jehovah's Witness this is the only thing resembling a holiday in the Jehovah's Witness world the Lord's Supper the memorial and it's so boring it's it's just so crazy it just didn't hit me until now that uh, these all these talks are just so monotonous and there's no emotion to it there's no ritual to it let me tell you something about religions guys ritual is important <laughs> okay if you've ever been to a mosque even if you're not a muslim even if you have something against islam you're gonna feel something when you go to a mosque and you see everyone praying and everyone bowing down at the same time it is just emotionally powerful seeing that seeing that ritual uh, if you go to a church if you hear the hymns and the organ playing and if you see the, the you know if it's a catholic church the procession it's emotional there's power in ritual that's a big thing about religions we tend to see religions as uh, focusing on beliefs but ritual is super important as well and that's the one thing that's missing in the jehovah's witness religion ritual because all the rituals they have there there's no um what do you call it there's no mysticism behind it, it it's all very monotonous it's just the, passing the bread and the wine and that's it that's the biggest ritual we have in this religion passing bread and wine and not being able to take it for yourself that's it like all the singing is monotonous it's it's done from a recording there's no live instruments there's no manipulative music like you see in evangelical churches yeah that's that's manipulative but it, it works you know there's none of that the the singing is monotonous the same songs over and over the prayers have to follow a guideline as well all the talks have to follow a guideline there's no room for personal uh, expression like I don't blame the speakers. Uh, uh, I'm sure the speakers are, are not bad speakers. They just have nothing to work with. And it's it, it sucks because the point of preaching is to generate an emotional response. And this religion just doesn't do that. So if you're an outsider, if you've never been to the Kingdom Hall before, if you're watching this, I actually encourage you to visit one day and you know if you're willing to sacrifice two hours of your life that you will never get back um you should go to a kingdom hall and you know witness this for yourself how inefficient how boring it is it actually is so a lot of things that i say in the channel will start to make sense <laughs> what an experience um and i mean the people themselves they seem the same um a lot of gossip you you can tell JWs love gossip, but they're humans like the rest of us. We, we all love gossip, of course. Um, but that's it. That's that's all this religion has to offer, a sense of community. There's no ritual. There's no mysticism. <laughs> there's no excitement to it. It's all super boring. And from a biblical point of view, as I try to understand it, it's it's just sacrilegious. <laughs> it's, it's a bunch of heresies. <laughs> um and yeah, there's, there's nothing that this religion can offer that you can't find in other churches. If that's your thing, if you want to go to a church and you want to feel good, I think other churches can do that for you. This religion doesn't. So that's my experience in the memorial. Let me know your experience in the comments below. Um, I also want to comment on another experience I had. I recently went to brunch with one of my friends, another friend from, from high school. And he has a baby now, a super cute baby. And I went with him and his wife, who, you know, we were friends from a long time ago, but we, we stopped talking once I left the religion. They didn't answer me back. 
But he suddenly reached out to me and he said, hey, you know, we want to go want to go get lunch. And I was like, yeah, we went to go get brunch and we talked normally about our lives. I actually thought he wouldn't bring up religion at all. And I was willing to leave it as, at that. But when we paid our bills um, and <clears throat> sorry, at the very end, he said, hey, you know, have you thought of going back to meetings? And then I was like, well, I'm no longer a believer. And then he asked me, well, like you don't believe in God or, and I was like, no, well, I just don't believe in the Bible anymore. And I gave him the reasons why I don't believe, you know, it's the same reasons I've shared with my parents when I sat down with them, when I, when I had to explain to them why I was not going to meetings anymore. The same reasons I gave my brother, the same reasons I gave to the elders. So yeah, it was just my reasons for not being a Christian anymore. You know, I don't believe in the Bible. I think the character of a God is problematic and, and uh, I don't see God destroying millions of people because they don't believe the same things I do. And I also got into specifics. Um, you know, I said, you know, Jerusalem was not destroyed in 607 BCE. So that kind of dismantles the whole 1914 teaching. So I gave my reasons for not believing in the Bible. But I also gave my reasons for not believing specifically in the religion. And... Let me tell you something about this friend. He's super smart. He's he's a very educated. He has a good job. He's been a math tutor. He's an engineer. He works at the airport right now. Um, and I expected for him to like try to bring up a car counter argument. You know, at least the overused arguments that you've seen from Watchtower. Like, hey, you know, you can't trust carbon dating or oh, uh, these historians got it wrong. But all he did was shrug <laughs> and be like, he, he looked at me in the eyes and he told me, okay, bro, well, when you when you see um, the world governments turning against all religions, please come back. Please call me. And I'm sure Jehovah is going to take you back. That's all he said to me. I, I spent 20 minutes probably giving him all the reasons why his religion is wrong i even told them you know if if before we used to believe this and the governing body admitted it was wrong you know why are you so sure that you have the right beliefs now if they're prone to change at any time he had no answer to that he just said oh we'll see we'll see about it that's all he had is that how you're gonna live your life <laughs> by saying oh we'll see i don't think so and it was incredibly sad to see that because this dude is talented. He's a great person. He's smart. But when the indoctrination kicks in, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. I'm telling you, there's brilliant people out there who are scholars and they know everything. And they, But when it comes to religion, there's just this blind on. And they just can't see the faults in their own belief system. It's incredibly sad. Guys... I'm so passionate about this project, this channel, because I've seen the damage that is caused by indoctrination. And I saw it again in my friend. And it's it's just it's just so sad seeing people that are not able to reason when it comes to their own religion. And it happens with all religions, with Christians, with Muslims, with Mormons. They just can't see it. They just can't take that veil off until so they're willing to look into their own belief system and admit that they're wrong but a lot of people are not able to do that at the moment because it's hard guys it's hard especially if you have a family especially if your wife is a believer if you're raising a kid uh, it, it's just incredibly difficult to be like oh man well, okay let me reconsider if my belief system is correct i'm incredibly for fortunate because i left this religion as a single man I left it because I was traveling abroad and I had time to step away from the Kingdom Hall. And maybe if COVID hadn't happened, I would have never woken up. I woke up not because I'm smarter than, smarter than the rest. I woke up because just the right circumstances aligned for me to wake up. And that may take more time for other people. It's, it's not about intelligence. It's, sometimes it's not even about honesty. It's... It's about circumstance. I'm incredibly lucky to have woken up. And I hope more and more of my friends 
um, are able to do so as well. I'm incredibly grateful as well that he listened to me. Who knows? Maybe what I told him will make him reconsider later on in life, even if it takes years. You never know. I like Jehovah's Witnesses say, I planted the seed. <laughs> uh, but at the end of the day, it's none of my business. I, my purpose is not to convert people. To, I mean, to deconvert people out of their religion. This channel is not dedicated to that. Um, this channel is dedicated to people who are already on the journey out and who need some mental clearance, some, some way to to realize that they're not going crazy, that they're not losing their minds, and to help them uh, detransition, de oh, I'm sorry, that was the wrong word, deconvert, um, to deconstruct out of the religion in a safe manner. Because it's an incredibly tough journey, and it does help having, you know, a voice of reason in all of this to, to tell you, hey, you know, just keep going, keep doing your research, don't sweat it, the end is not coming. These people are going to keep celebrating the memorial for decades to come. Armageddon is not going to show up. The United Nations is not going to destroy the world's religions. So there's no rush. There's no rush. Uh, just keep living your best life possible and uh, other people will notice. Uh, other people will notice that you're not a complete wreck once you leave the religion. And that there's happiness to be found outside the cult. These are my experiences going to the memorial, guys, and talking with my friend. So please let me know what you, if you visited the memorial this year. Let me know how it went. Uh, thank you for joining me. And thank you for listening to my little rant till the end. I'm sorry I, it's not very well produced. But hope something resonated with you. And I will see you in the next video.